what's up guys so welcome back to another tutorial so in this video you are going to learn about how to work with a filter so there are multiple ways of uh, filtering the data so I have used all of them right so already you watched my checkboxes filter video on my YouTube channel so there is another one and uh, there are basically three ways to filter the data right so the first way I have show I, I want to show you is a search one and uh, we can also uh, search using the drop downs and uh, plus we have the data coming out from the server or from the database and we can easily just click on this and you see without page refreshing we are able to paginate the data right from the first page to the page three and you see not only that this data is basically coming from the cedar or factory method right so i want to explain you each and everything on this video so just want to show you a real quick demo of the first search so here i click on here and if i'm gonna type here because this search is basically um search on based off name so if i just only type here i just want to zoom this so you guys can see so if i just only simply type here clear and you see that the first card appears on based off name right and uh, this is our search there's no need of submit button you just only need to type on and you can easily search the result all right and if i just remove this out and you see we are back with all the data on our which is coming from our database all right and uh, next i want to show you this pagination as i already showed so once i click on there the results appears we have right now 20 data coming from here so we use a factory for this and this these drop downs are also for the search which i have been working for my next tutorial all right and on based of these drop downs we can search the result r and these are all uh, the options are cascaded right so that means that if i click on this option one we can search the data and if we use multiple uh, select options we can search all using uh, the cascaded way right so this is what i have been doing with the select checks box uh, so with the with select options all right so that's what I, i'm gonna going to create and i hope you guys will enjoy so let's jump in for the very basic ui and the pagination all right so let's jump in for this video all right guys so we are back to the video and the first thing you guys need to do is to click on the git bash here if you have installed this uh command terminal which is a very very useful terminal and if you have a very basic cmd or you can just simply um you can even run through your visual studio code i want to show you real quick but first i'm going to use this uh, git bash which you can easily install from the uh, git dash scm.com i want to give this link in the description as well so you can download that very simple installation right so I, i'm on I, i'm right now on my hd docs folder so uh, the very simple command for installing the laravel but make sure that you have composer installed in your system right so here i'm going to write my very first com command for this so composer create dash project laravel slash laravel so in the very first video i'm gonna create this video for my pagination where i want to display results using factories and cedars and we can display pagination using ajax and jquery which is without page refreshing all right so i just simply clicks on enter and this want to take some while and we'll i will be back once we have installed our first project for pagination series right so i will be we'll get back soon okay guys now the first thing we are going to focus on front end right so i have created a very dummy front end right so it's it's first we are working with these cards and these search ui some header and footer so i think so there's a multiple ways of doing the same thing but i want to guide you guys so you can follow the convention rules which is more important so here you see inside the resources folder we have views and views comprises of includes layouts and pages which is by default not created so i created that and the reason why I did because I don't want to spend a lot of time on this user interface uh, because this video is more about the search and the dynamic functionality which includes the pagination and also the factories uh, how we can grab and the data uh, multiple data and add it to the database so this is what my main concern is so I just created a very basic layout 
So I'll, all I done, I just, I just want to show you so you guys can understand the structure that we followed up. So here you see we have the filter dot blade dot PHP file. This filter is basically I I just separately put everything for what we have for the select options, right? We right now we have three, so I just simply paste all the um, all the everything which is which matches up with my filter right so you can divide up the sections which is more convention and better rule however in some cases you don't need to do it you can even uh do it on a single page but i prefer that it's my normal way of doing it is to just make separate files for each module or for each section next i have the header and header basically is the nav everything that you see on this page it's 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 the header which has uh links and some logo uh so we have the separate um separate file for the header we include the separate footer and also the search also you see here on top and uh, that's what i created for separately for the search.play.php and uh, I, I believe uh, you understand everything right there next we have the layouts folder right so layouts it's a convention again that master.blade.php it's a better way to put uh, these header script and the meta tags inside the master.blade and why we say master that because that means that everything uh, this normal structure of the of the HTML which comprises of the meta the head tags and the and the uh, body tags so we include everything and we include it with the use of the helper functions or uh, or the methods which comprise of include and we can include it by giving the name of the folder and the name of the file and that exactly I did because I know my header is on top so I give it on the first priority and second for my search and after that I created a class because and I wrap it inside the yield content which includes content right so that actually means is whatever the file we create separately we need to put every because we know that for the other files that we are going to create that will contains the head tags and definitely the the style.css and everything else so i included up there so we can grab the uh, the basic meta structure for the html and extends using the other page which i want to show you later on uh, very soon and you can understand that so we include the content and if you guys are still unaware of the uh these functions you could easily watch up my videos for my laravel crash course all right and uh, uh, i also add up the script for my jquery and plus we have the stack so what actually stack does stack actually is a is a helper function in laravel which um actually everything that we can get it from using the extends but scripts provide us the advantage that if we individually add some script which only works for our one file or the other file so still if you have any confusion i want to show you while we start doing and working with the stack and same approach you can follow up for your styles you just simply need to change whatever the name you change here you need to push up on the other content while you create a new file we'll show you later on right and uh, i just created a page which is empty for now and reason why i keep that empty so you guys could understand about the pagination concept so that that's file is for that purpose and i haven't write any content or code here so you guys can follow up the uh, the understand the the functionality and the other stuff i believe we are almost done in the css file i create that inside my public and we create a folder with the name of assets and you see here i have um, in my master.blade.php file we have the asset so asset asset is basically re, uh, uh, is it's a root directory for our public folder and everything that we put up here inside we create a folder inside public which is assets and css so right now we have two things here we have the css and the images there right we can add up the more uh the we can add even a separate file for the js or more depending on uh your page uh, page requirement all right so i hope right now we are done with that with the basic ui and everything so let's uh, jump up with the uh, the structure for the home right i just want to show you also that i created a controller 
app HTTP controllers and the name of the controller is a home controller so I, I give it the view of home so basically view is I replace the welcome uh, you see that while you install your new project you see welcome.blade.php so I remove the mail welcome and and updated with the home and put up the uh, these cards inside that which you see uh, right up here and we extends as I explained so we extends from the master file and everything which is inside the body it should be inside uh, we add for the section content so inside body we can have these file uh, these divs and the element structure for the HTML all right and uh, same approach I follow for the images and some very basic classes and inside the CSS we have styled file which I, I showed show you already real quick which is very I believe simple I just add up the body some navs and most of the stuff which is related to the front end and I believe um, you guys could understand hold on in, the, in that and uh, I think so I use here t tag dash dark right so if I just remove this and uh, refresh that so it looks fine right okay so that's all good and next thing I'm going to follow up here is just make it dark it's not looking cool yeah okay so next I'm going to do is to um, is to create the data right so the data that we uh, right now it's all the static data so we need to add up the data from the uh, database so I already have created a database so with the name of filter app and this filter app is also created inside my PHP my admin so I already created that and you can uh, run migrations which is a better way of doing it even you can individually create the tables using um, my SQL and uh, but uh, but I believe the better approach of Laravel which allow us to create the uh, model and uh, migrations run so what I'm gonna do is to run the migration so before running the migrations we need to um, already we have the user model created so if I go to user dot php and you see that we have our uh, fill labels for the name email and passwords and if I want to go to my create users table which should be inside your um, uh, database and migration in in your root directory you see you have your I'm sorry for this <laughs> all right so we have the database and the migrations and uh, we have the users table as well and for this users table we have right now we have uh, some name emails but we want to grab some our own columns so I just want to copy it and uh, paste up right real quick here so you see here we have the first name last name email and type address country we also add about folder for here and uh, you can later on ch you can change those column on based off your requirement and this is all what I want to guide you how you can work with that all right so next I'm going to create a model uh, sorry not the model I just want to run the migration so all you need to do is to PHP artisan migrate and once you do that so it, it gonna migrate it and how you want to check this out you need to click on your database and you see now we have the users table inside that right okay so now we have our uh, migrations running and uh, I need to create the factory right so if I want to search here user factory which is already created uh, by default and the directory for this is again the database and factories and inside factories we have uh, the user factory dot PHP all right so I'm, I'm real quick I'm going to do is to do some few changes here so for name email and email verified and I just want to remove not remove everything actually I just want to comment this out so you guys can uh, see the difference that I have used for my column so you see here we have the first name right you see as you see in our database we have created the first name last name email email verified at country address password so so what actually does it means and uh, how from where does it coming from so 
Uh, right now it's coming from the user model and uh, we are creating the fake data and um, uh, real quick I want to show you database seeder so here you see inside the seeders we have a we have a method with the name of run and that runs the uh, that, that actually runs the seeder uh, for our users uh, and uh, this actually coming from the yeah, users table seeder right and if I just want to show you real quick So we are going to create a seeder with the name of right now you see we have database seeder.php so first i want to create a, here a seeder so to make a seeder i believe the command should be php arts and make colon seeder and the name of the seeder in my case is users table seeder so i just copy that and paste it and you see now we have created the uh, seeder right so let's first uh, jump to the to the factory that we created so I have some data and this is all from the uh, if you go to the github repository for that so uh, you could type here um, factory data for laravel data whatever you I just missed that yeah and you can run the command through it or you can um, generate the dummy laravel data which i have seen um, which should be the github link so there's there's a bunch bunch of uh cedar way and uh, you can learn through it and you can grab different way of uh, doing it but i actually done all through using the cedar i learned through it uh, and, and even the cedar data for laravel you could type here first name last name and uh, something like this and I, I i just believe i get this all from the uh, from the github link i right now i can't find it but i i could show you um on my description right so all i got from there right so this is the basic information i want to give this name this name is uh, this is basically the column name and that's the uh, faker data which it it gets from and uh, same here for the last name i get some name for and for email it gonna generate some unique and uh, and next we have our email verified at uh, random type and that's random type is coming actually from my uh, I just want to show you so actually I need to create a class here so before I creating a class I just want to type this out so what I does it uh, I, I just have to create a inside app I'm gonna create the uh, folder with the name of constants right so you, here you follow up the convention. So inside app, I have a folder with the name of con, uh, constants. So this is, again, I, I just want to repeat that again, that this is a better way. You need to follow up the steps, which looks elegant and more uh, clear. Uh, the coding structure should be uh, phenomenally good. So this is what I always recommend that to follow. So I go up to my uh, global constant and uh, I created that class and inside that class i'm going to create some bunch of things so uh, i just create two things here um we have two users right now we have the front end and the back end so i i just passed up a variable and give it the value of front end and same for the back end i, I just give this value to this and and what i'm going to do is to um if i go back to my user factory and uh, it's all good for now so I, I passed up here that get the value and this actually pertains to user underscore type and this user underscore type I pass it to the array underscore flip so array underscore flip will randomly uh, uh, display the front end the back end and uh, put that in a random style so we can filter it uh, in a more professional way it looks more data looks more pleasing so we can uh, it help us to search right so you can uh, do that way you can flip the data as well using the uh, using the factory 
and password i just want a one two three four five six very simple and remember token i give the random string of 10 right so as simple as the, is that right okay so once you're done with that you need to go back to your database cedar.php okay so inside database cedar.php you need to call right so i just put up down here you see users table cedar we just bring this in and um, and 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 by using this class we can call it up so and now last thing i believe is the users table cedar and definitely while we run this method this will looks that how much time we need to run so that will create the data and uh, i just use here 30 right so that means we'll generate 30 rows inside the users model and that will create and that's that's as simple as that right so let's let's check this out if i just do php artisan uh db colon seed and i just put up enter and the good thing is that it works right so it's seeding completed completed successfully and uh, if i just go back to my database and you see that we have a random uh, data uh, we have our email first name last name even type which it flips up that's what i just showed you real and remember token and some data as well right so this this is phenomenally awesome in laravel this factory concept so uh that's that's what you guys have learned from here right and uh yeah i just want to show you real quick last thing in for this video is to show you we can uh, change the data right which is I believe in our home.play.php so let's show us uh, show up the data dynamically so I remove all the cards and just bring it one and uh, real quick I just need to go to my um, it should be this I just copy it uh, from my previous code and paste it here so just remove it what actually confused you and uh, yeah that's cool so I, I actually did it does is that I have used a loop here and uh, this users is coming from here right so that's the question so I just need to create a class inside the user.php so inside user.php um, I'm gonna create here a function so public function get users and uh, let's grab the user so we could put the dollar users equal to so db column table well we already have add up uh, the use db here so you can use make sure that you have used the db and down here uh, we're using the table users all right and just simply return the users all right all right so the one thing i want to make sure guys if you use here get here to get all the records so because we are using here the paginate so what paginate does it's not work with the collection so because we are giving the limit to show only uh, the six or five record on the main on on first uh paginate on the first page right so per underscore page i give it the limit and this actually is coming from the uh, um, controller right so just go to controller.php make sure that after base controller and uh, give it the uh, per page to so just want to grab from here just define define here right so i define the per page limit to be six right so after that you need to go up to your controller which is the home controller which where where we need to uh everything you you see here a loop right and that loop is actually coming this users actually coming from the uh and and one and one thing i i just want to show you guys make sure that this should be extends right uh extend that layout to the master and add the section for the content right so previously i haven't did that just just grab this whole uh these two things make sure that and and this users is with, with the link so we are looping the data and that's gonna bring up the pagination down for uh, uh, below these cards right 
Okay, so inside the controller, uh, which is the home controller, I'm gonna pass up the variable here. So it's very simple. Uh, all you need to do is to create a variable with the name of users and that's users will uh, will get from the get users which is a static method just remove the parameter here so this from this user model we are getting the get users and uh, it's make sure that it's it's a static it's it's a static function and static functions are the functions which are not instantiated but basically we are passing inside the class so um, we put up here a static function and uh, return the view and let's do with to pass it to the page so here i use here users and users all right and uh, if i go back and refresh this and you see it's working nice and cool all right so we are getting all the data plus we are getting the links down here so if i click on the second and you see it's 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 bring us to the page too right and uh, same case for if i go to the last page page five still showing up and these are all the last records right so we have no, nothing more than that so five into six is equal to 30 so this this would be our last page all right and uh, one th one more thing i'm gonna do inside the user.php uh just for the reference right it's not necessary if you guys not need that and i'm just doing it just for that purpose that if this name this name is uh actually i can't see the name right and and the reason why we can't see the name because i just copied from my co previous uh code you see here um i command this out and uh, just un uncomment this out you see this full name right the full name there's no any column uh inside the users table with the full name we however we have separately f name and the last name which represent the first name and last name right so in order to grab this full name and concatenate that i just want to create another function so public function so public function get full name attribute so get full name attribute and uh, then we have to check this if that full name you see first so for the first uppercase should be so in order to access this we need to use a this keyword here so dollar doll this first name and we need to concatenate and bring some space here so i use dot and uh, you see first and now i'm going to use here dollar this last name and after that i just want to put some condition right if if that string length str len we create a function here with the name full name and if sh if it's less than equal to 20 right so that means that should return me the full name right and in other case and in the other case if it should less than uh if it exceeds than 20 then it should put the substring so substring does it it's just grab the full name and the starting of the last position and if it exceeds that 20 and then you see these last three dots right so let's uh, go back and refresh this it says undefined variable full name right and it shows up inside the home.blade.php all right so if i go back to the home.blade and uh, undefined variable full name all right and only i have passed one up here and see yeah that should be full name uh, actually I spelled it wrong right it's a camel case so if I refresh this out and you see now we have the last three dots after that because the name is uh, uh, has more character has more string uh, above 20 so I believe uh, we are almost uh, done with the front end and we are done with the pagination as well we are um we have all the data structured and you get some concept about the factories and db 
All right, so in the next video, I'm going to explain to you about how we can use the Ajax as a pagination. Like if I just click on the page two, you see on top, you the page refreshes and it shows the page two. But we need that the page should work asynchronously. That means that without page refreshing, we can navigate to the to the page number five, right? So that's what we can cover in the next video. And I hope you guys will uh, like and uh, love the series. So keep subscribing and I want to see you in the next video.